Um, with that, uh, we'll uh, hand things over to uh, Michael to talk about um, his journey from customer to partner to VMware. Uh-oh. Who's ready? <laughs> Is that you? You ready? <laughs> I'm always ready, I think. Something like that. Stand by. Let me get my stuff shared here in the proper manner. Share screen. Share this desktop. Let me know when you can see the background, and then I will present. Yeah, I see uh, VMware background. Beautiful. How about Always now? to support. That's it. Yep. All righty. Well, we go. thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, my name is Michael Fleischer. I'm a core solutions engineer for VMware uh, based outside of Philadelphia. Um, what I'm going to walk you through today is basically how I went from a VMware customer to a partner to uh, now VMware. And I promise you can do it too. Um, it may seem daunting. It may seem like whatever. It's, it's doable. So let's, uh, let's get kicked off here. Quick agenda, don't really need to go over this. I just put it in here because it feels, makes it feel a little more complete, but let's go through a quick introduction of what this is gonna look like. Then I'll take you through my journey, and then we'll talk about branding, quick call to action, and then we'll close out here. All right. First of all, what is a journey? You start on a bike and you head towards a, totally just kidding, that's not what this presentation is. So I don't, Again, this, this slide means something like it's, it's, it's a real thing, right? Like that is the truth, but that's not what this presentation is. I don't want to take you through and give you hypotheticals. Don't want to take you through and be like, this is what things should be. No, I, I want to tell you what I did, how I did it. We're going to go straight up from, from college through now. <laughs> I'm going to take you through my career. And basically, I'm going to tell you what I did, give you some direct pointed feedback on, on what you should be doing, what you can look to do. And then kind of, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, I'm happy to help anybody out at any time. All right. So career beginnings. So I went to, bam, Villanova University, and I got a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. So what that really is, is computer science and electrical engineering smashed together. Boom, you're a human. Go do things and learn things. Um, First of all, go Cats, uh, massive Villanova basketball fan, as you all should be. I don't care where you went to school, Villanova basketball is the best, fam. All right, so beyond that, uh, yeah, so like I said, electrical engineering, computer science, smash together, go out in the world and do things, figure out what you want to do. Um, first thing I did was I actually became a customer, but through a kind of interesting route, and I'll say. So my first job was in Toledo, Ohio. That's the Toledo Mud Hen Stadium, AAA minor league uh, baseball team, and then the feeder team for the Detroit Tigers. Went to tons of games when I lived out there. Um, but I ended up out there based on the fact that my, uh, my girlfriend at the time, my now wife, I, I rolled the dice and, you know, it paid off in the end apparently. Uh, but she moved uh, to Michigan to get her uh, master's at the University of Michigan. So I followed her out there. Um, it, it was a total gamble. I had no network, no connections, nothing. I did. <laughs> I, I knew nobody. If I would have stayed out here, I probably would have, you know, got the job um, through my connections and through Villanova and all that good stuff. But I was like, you know what, you only get, you know, certain opportunities only come up every once in a while. So I was like, you know what, let's roll the dice and go. So hopped out there, um, hopped on dice.com, which I think it still exists, but I went on there looking for some work. Um, and there was a company that there was a small company out of Toledo and they had a small in-house written app that was broken um, and the people that had written it had left. So they were left with this application that they had to run once a month to do some billing and processing. And it was straight up broken because they got these new data feeds and they, it just was incompatible with the application. So they, you know, I, I applied through dice. They, they contacted me and we, we had a chat and they basically said, Hey, can you, can you fix it? And I was like, sure. Didn't know what I was doing, but I guess I can sum this up with I'm a dork and I was like, I'll give it a shot. What's the worst that happens? So I, uh, they, they brought me in. Um, they gave me a whole bunch of log me in access for remote, you know, remote access. They said, here's the keys to the kingdom. Here's the servers you need to look at. Here's what the app does go. Um, basically what happens, I ended up, I figured it out in about two days and they, they hired me the next day, basically. So that was my first job was running this small IT shop at a company out of Toledo, Ohio. 
Holy Toledo. I forgot I had the little hashtag in there. There you go. Bam. All right. So let's talk about what I learned on that first job. So the first thing I learned was what VMware vSphere was. So, or the first big thing I'd say. So the first hypervisor I actually installed was Citrix Zen server, which it was, you know, it, it worked. I didn't know any, didn't know any different or better at the time. So I installed that was running into some issue installing Red Hat 654 VM. I can't remember what the version was at the time, um, but I was having an issue with it. And uh, I was talking to some, uh, some people that we had, you know, friends I'd made out there and they said, hey, have you ever heard of VMware ESX? And I was like, don't know what any of those letters mean, but I know what VMware is because of Fusion and I run that on my Mac. So let's, let's figure out what this is. Um, so that was my first step into the, the VMware sphere, no pun intended. Um, so I, that was a four one, I, AKA the good old days. Um, so installed that on a server that we had got to know it a little bit. And then I was like, this is the coolest bleep ever. I want to know more about this. Uh, it, this is the future. I kind of, I, I glommed onto it really quickly and said, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I want to want to learn more. So that was the first big thing I learned there. Second was really just data center basics. I think I knew what a server was when I walked into that job first day, you know, I, I knew that, I think I got the concept, but really I had to learn, you know, like I said, I, I ran the IT shop here. So I got to learn what app directory networking, DNS, DHCP, all, all of the stuff that you have to learn to run an IT shop. I kind of learned that um, on the job and it was, uh, it was, it was fun. Lots of, uh, lots of little sleep, lots of little sleep, if that makes any sense just staying up, Googling the heck out of things and figuring it out. So that was, again, that was just another big thing. And the last thing, uh, that scripting and automation is awesome. So coming out of school with my degree, I wanted to be a developer. That's just, that's just kind of what I thought was the next step of my career. Um, like I said, it, it just didn't work out that way. I ended up in this job, and it fell into infrastructure and, and started to love it. And then I realized that, hey, if I learn Python, Bash, PowerShell, I can extend what is being done with infrastructure and automate it. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. This is, this is Michael, I need to do this. So with that, those are the three big things I learned out of that, that first job was just infrastructure is awesome. It can be made even more awesomer by automating. And at that point, so I'd been there about two years, my wife had graduated. And we we both looked at each other and said, let's go back east. The Midwest is great and all, but no, let's go back east. So with that, I got my second job and still a VMware customer, but this is a, I went from a small shop to a much bigger shop. So my second job was in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, good old South Jersey. Um, left this picture in because it's hilarious. If you Google Mount Laurel, New Jersey, this is the first <laughs> Google image that comes up. Couldn't find anything better. So boom, that's, that's Mount Laurel for you. Apparently this is Mount Laurel. Um, so yeah, second job was in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Let's talk about that a little bit. So there I hopped in as an infrastructure engineer one. So what that really meant was taking what I had learned from the other job and just scaling it up dramatically. Like I said, that was a, a small business before moved to a, a medium to large enterprise, I'd call them. Um, take everything and just completely scale it. Went from a closet with a rack um, to a data center and oh, a DR site and oh, uh, remote offices all around the world with infrastructure. So for me, it was like, you know, the, the drool inducing moment where I went from having nothing to play with to having way too much to play with and learn. And it was super exciting for me. So it, other things I learned here were just, you know, I, under, I deployed a super tiny SAN at that old place. And, you know, I moved on to, we, they had a, VN, or a EMC VNX at the time and fiber channel was like wizardry to me. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. So that was what infrastructure engineer was. One for, was for me was just taking my technical skill set and just blowing it up as big as possible. What they also found out at this time was that any of the operating systems that they didn't have people to really um, do anything with like open VMS and AF 400 and even Linux at the time, Red Hat, they were like, Hey, Michael knows things about things that aren't windows here. Give it to him. So I ended up being the, the one of everything guy there, which was kind of fun. But the, the cap on being an infrastructure engineer, one that I think really kind of made me take off to where I am today um, was VMUG. So 
didn't introduce this earlier, but I, uh, I was the Philly Bean Mug leader for five years. Um, so it was, if I can do the math here, uh, 2013 through 2018, I was the, the Philly Bean Mug leader. Still very involved. Um, met Ben. I've known Ben for thousands of years now. Um, but I, I have to say that if anybody is looking to do anything to get to know more people, um, please involve yourself with BMUG. Reach out to Ben. He, he, I'm sure he'll take the help. <laughs> um, just, just get involved. It's, it's a lot of fun. I met way too many people. It gives you good exposure. It's, um, it's huge. But what I yeah, will definitely say agree. is... Good. I'm glad you do, Ben. Um, what I will say is... So I'll, actually, I'll tell you the story. So my boss at the time um, at this job, he, uh, he left to go to VMware. He left to VMware to become a TAM. And he was the VMUG leader. And he said to me, hey, do you want my spot? And I think before he even finished the sentence, my hand was up in the air. And I'm like, yep, let's go. Um, what I didn't realize at the time was that it would involve some public speaking. And I hated public speaking um, completely. It frightened the hell out of me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. So I said yes. And then I started to think about it three seconds later. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? But if I guess the way I'll frame it is if you told that self, that self back in 2013 that I'd be doing what I do today and presenting almost every day and loving it and having no fear of it. I kind of would have said some choice words to you. I would be like, no, there's no effing way, but here we are. So getting out there and doing it is the best way to get over that fear. So what I'm really getting at is get involved with VMUG. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's keep going here. So after that got promoted was an infrastructure engineer too. The big thing I did here was take that automation um, skill set that I mentioned before and kind of built a framework around it uh, for this company. So I really wanted SRM when I was at, uh, on the customer side. I owned the VMware environment at this point. And I was like, I, I need SRM. We, have, we do DR tests like twice a year and it was, they were manual and painful. And I was like, I can, I can make this better if we have SRM. Um, Apparently I was either, I was, I was just not a good salesperson at the time. I'll put it that way. I, I couldn't sell it to, you know, be the, the, the reason I couldn't sell the reason why we need to buy it. So we never got it. But what I did was I stayed up and drank a whole bunch of Mountain Dew a couple of nights um, and basically wrote a, a framework in power CLI that mimicked SRM. I called it MF SRM, uh, Michael Fleischer SRM, TM, put a little trademark on it because, you know, totally fake and awesome. Uh, but yeah, so what I did there was basically build an analog to SRM to automate our DR processes. Um, last I heard, I got a text about six months ago. I've been, I've been gone from this job for about three years now. And I got a text that said, hey, your scripts still work great. So apparently they're still in production. So that's delightful. Um, but yeah, that was, the, that was the big thing I did from infrastructure engineer two was really building something as opposed to fixing things, I'd say. Then up next, got promoted again, was an infrastructure engineer three. So what that really meant was global purview, right? So instead of just dealing with the local continent, I could um, architect things for, from Mount Laurel out to insert company or insert country in the world here. But at you know, a certain point, I was progressing there, loving it, having a great time. Um, but the allure of the other side started to catch up to me. And I basically decided that I, uh, you know, it was time for a change. Needed and wanted a change. So I, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But for first off, let's talk about what I learned there. So the big thing I'd say to call out is I migrated from a purely technical, like I do this and I'm really good at doing the technical stuff to moving to an architectural mindset. But the first big thing I learned was to talk. I sort of mentioned this with the BMUG stuff, but I, I learned to open my mouth, say words in one direction, and so people could hear me and understand me. Um, I was really, really bad at talking. I'm still not good talk well, like as you can tell, but I, I learned to talk and say, hey, I wanna frame up this thought and let somebody else listen to it. So that was, I, and I, I credit BMUG for that 100%. So I learned to talk. Second thing I learned was to ask, and everybody I'm sure misses Ask Jeeves because Ask Jeeves was the best, um, best search engine around. But uh, yeah, so if you want something, you, you have to ask. Um, people will not give you things if they don't know what you want. It's, 
I, I can give several examples in my career where I've said, hey, I want that, where it was either within reach or slightly within, you know, slightly out of range of reach. And you either, there's, there's three ways that can go, right? It's either yes, where you get it, which is like, okay, awesome. No, which to me, when I hear a hard no, that's a driving factor to me. <laughs> if somebody tells me no, it's like, all right, well, I got to figure out how to do it now. And then there's the not yet. And the not yet is a great one because that's a yes with a caveat. And so you just have to take that conversation to figure out what the little piece you're missing is. So it's, it's, a, it's a game at that point. The bottom line is, if you want something, you got to ask. There, there's no, nobody's going to give you anything if they don't know what you want. So make sure that you go out and ask for what you want. Again, as long as it's reasonable. You can't ask for the unreasonable and expect to get it. And third, I used this word a bit ago, but to architect. So what I, what, this is the Michael definition of architecture. Um, I see architecture as uh, getting a requirement, giving the best of breed, um, best practices approach to how that something should be done, build it out, connect all the dots, and then hand it back. I think that that's my best way of understanding or explaining architecture in a technical way. I'm going to you know, put a little wrapper on this or build it or abstract it if you want to use VMware terms uh, in a little bit in a, uh, a little bit further. But that's what I'll say right now. But I learned to take instead of just, hey, let's work on one thing here. Let's look at all the pieces and see how they fit together to build the best architecture for my company. All right. Like I said, love this place was having a blast. But there was a point where I needed to uh, I just I needed to change. So I made the jump. I went to a VMware partner, and this was the jump to pre-sales. Um, I'm currently a pre-sales solution engineer, so I've kind of stayed in this realm since then. Um, but this was a, a big change. <laughs> we'll go over that in a second. So third job in Philadelphia, PA. And there is gorgeous Philadelphia. Chose this photo. This is from the Camden, New Jersey side, looking at Philly across the river, across the Delaware. Chose this picture because the building I worked in is actually in it, which was kind of cool. Won't tell you which one, but it's here. Uh, this is, I love this photo. It's really cool. I've never really, I, I didn't realize I'd be able to find my tiny little building in there. Again, it's not one of the big ones. It's one of the tiny ones. And I mean, hashtag cheesesteaks. Who else thinks of Philly doesn't think of cheesesteaks? So what I learned at this third job, this was a completely different situation that I'd been used to. Um, I was used to being super technical, like hyper, hyper, hyper technical and, you know, Give me a problem, I'll give you a, an architecture to fix it. Um, that's really not what pre-sales is. The first thing I learned, the first, first, first thing that I still today, you know, I use every day is to converse, not converse, but that's a, it's a good logo, uh, but learn to converse. So before I said I learned how to talk, talking is a one-way thing. And I think I kind of alluded to that where I learned to just, ah, to say things in one direction so that people would listen. Right or wrong, if you say things, somebody's gonna hear it. But what I did, what I learned here was how to converse, how to really have a conversation with someone to say, you know, here's what I'm thinking, what do you think? Listening intently, figuring out how you wanna take that conversation to the next step. Like if you have the goal in mind at the beginning of the conversation, how to, how to get the bouncing ball to move in the direction that you want, um, and then how to, to button it all up and basically come up with the, the next steps out of that conversation. So. Again, huge piece of what I do today, but learning how to converse is something that is, it's not an easy thing to do, but um, it's, it's really necessary. And next up, sales. Um, yeah, didn't even know what the word pipeline meant when I hopped over to pre-sales, I'll be honest with you. I, I knew the word existed, but I didn't know what any of it meant. So the whole change in mindset of, uh, my, not even mindset change in learning what sales was was a is a big uh, a big awakening moment for me. There's a lot of different things you have to think about that I had not thought about previously. And lastly, to solution. So I said before I I amp up what I talked about on the architecture side. So what I view again, this is the Michael Fleischer definition of solutioning is taking that architecture and tying it back to a business problem or a business a business need and then you can associate a dollar value to it. So that's what I view solutioning as. So I've gone from being very technical and focusing on the nuts and bolts and the speeds and feeds of this product to architecture, which is how do they fit together? 
and then the solution, which is architecture with a bow of business around it. Again, my definition, but that's kind of what I see. And again, I'm a solution engineer. That's my title now. And that's really what I, I do daily now. So was at that job about 10 months. And I think about six months in my, my buddy, my, my peer now, um, he reached out to me. I had done some consult or I had brought him on to do some consulting work with me at my, at the job before this. And he said, Hey, you know, there's a spot open at VMware. I just got here. You should come too." And I'm like, I'm good. I've been here like 10 months. I'm, or I was, I've been here six months. I'm excelling. Just, you know, I'm learning maybe, maybe later. Um, I sent him that text. And I think he called me about 10 minutes later. He's like, no, you should really apply. I'm like, all right, fine. So I applied. And, uh, is anybody who's, I don't know if anybody's ever applied to VMware, the, the process to, uh, go through the interviews and all that stuff is not short at all, but the process happened. And, Four months later, I'm here. So let's talk about this and what I do here and what I've learned so far. So I've been here one and three quarters years. It'll be two years in August. Um, so let's do a little deep dive on what I've learned here so far. Totally kidding, not gonna do that. Um, I've learned so much since I've been here, so many things to list. I'm happy to do that in another session, but if I were to go into it today, we'd go all over the place. So basically what I'm getting at here is there's a lot more to, to all this. And if you guys would like, if I get good feedback, if you tell Ben, hey, that Michael guy has some, somewhat of a head on his shoulders, I'd be happy to come back and do a, a follow-up session here of, you know, I'm not from customer to partner to VMware, but from, you know, VMware, this is what I do. I'm happy to come and, and talk about that and you know explain what what this job really looks like. So with that, let's talk about your brand. Bam, that's all I'm gonna say, brand yourself. So this is a Williams-Sonoma brand. So people brand their stakes. This is the only image I could find of a brand and it's fine, so that's on my slide. Uh, but what, what I will implore all of you is brand yourself. I hope some of my brand comes across here on this call. I, um, I cut to the chase. I don't beat around the bush or dance when it comes to things. I tell you what I'm thinking. I keep a lot of humor in what I'm talking about because if things get too dry, nobody likes boring conversations. It's just not fun. So what I will, what I will tell everybody here is figure out who you want to be, figure out what, what you want to look like to others and just do it right. To so just get, uh, just work on the, the confidence, uh, to, to put whatever front you want on or whatever, again, it doesn't have to be a front. Take what you are, take who you are and take who you wanna be, blend them together, put that on your face and just go out in the world and, and be you. Um, that's the best, the best advice I can give is just be yourself, um, but have that definition of who you wanna be with you at all times. So with that, let's talk about a little call to action here. So this is largely gonna be, um, rehash of what we've talked about, but I really want to hammer the point tome here that these are the things that really helped me was focusing on these five things we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to talk about here. The first we just talked about, but I'm going to say it again, define your brand, know who you want to be, make sure people know who that is and develop that every day, make it, it's going to grow. It's going to change based on your, you know, any situation you're in, every conversation you have, but take what you've learned and um, build upon that to make yourself a better person. Next, ask. I won't say it any harder than that, but people will not give you things if they don't know you want it. So if you want something, come up with a good reason of why you should get it. Build a business case if you have to. Be like, look, these three things lead up to why I want this. If you come into any conversation that, uh, with your career and have a presentation built, even if it doesn't need one or a slide that shows what you want, it goes the, it shows you go the extra mile to say, Hey, this is, this, this guy really wants something and he really means it because look, he wrote it down. So if you want something, please ask. Next up, talk. I'll, again, I'll, I'm just hammering points home here. Learning to talk is it's not easy if you don't like it, but it's um, it becomes fun once you really do it enough because you can, uh, you can do, you know, as Nick before did, he just, he, he brought his brand forth in his talking. You can totally see it. Um, and when you can throw jokes into something, it just, it, it makes, it makes presentations fun. 
and next up converse, right? So like I said, really, when you, when you have a conversation with somebody, listen to what they're actually saying, listen to what they're asking for and see how you can work with them to get to what both of you want. So when you're having a conversation with someone, it's, it's not always good to go in with like, well, what do I want to get out of this? But if you can have that kind of mindset when you're, when you're talking to people, if you want to get something out of the conversation, figure out how you can get there in, in the right ways, right? So it, take something, take the end and make the conversation go around that. You don't have to be super like hammer it right at the beginning and be like, I want this. So, you know, like come in with, all right, let's have a conversation about things, a little bit of small talk, move towards the end of what you want. And the last thing is just be awesome. Um, I, I like to think of myself as an awesome person. Anybody on the call, you can feel free to tell me I'm not. And that's totally fine. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, but what I've noticed is if you think you're an awesome person, you are an awesome person. So the, the, the better that you act and present yourself around people, the better things will turn out for you. Um, I, I truly believe that, that if you, if you carry awesomeness, if you carry that, like, Hey, I, I want to bring passion to something. It just, it, it, it pays off in dividends. So just be awesome. All right. So let's close this guy off here and we'll, uh, I'll get you keep on moving here with uh, your awesome VMUG meeting today. But what I will say is go out and be the best version of yourself every single day of your life. Take everything I've said to you today. Um, if you've already been working on branding yourself and, you know, talking, conversing, asking, if you've already been working on that. That's awesome. There's always more to learn. Like I said, I, I, I still don't talk very well and I know that, but I'm learning every day to keep learning more about talking, conversing and just getting better at all that good stuff. And what I, and the last thing I will say is please reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, reach out to me on Twitter. I will definitely get back to you. Happy to always have a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, have a career discussion, whatever anybody wants. I'm, I'm here. So please take advantage of that if you'd like. Um, I've done a lot of cool stuff. I won't say that, you know, my career path is the best or whatever, but I've done some cool stuff and I have some insight that I can give everybody. So I'm more than happy to have a conversation. And finally, thank you. Appreciate it. And more than happy to answer questions about whatever the heck I just rattled off for the last 26 minutes. Awesome. I don't see any questions in the chat. Does anyone want to unmute themselves and ask a question? Michael, you weren't you weren't on the partner side very long. I remember you you make the switch. You 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 and I spoke about it, and I think just a few months later, you were over at VMware, right? Yeah, it was um it was ten months total, and again, it was total fluke. I I did not so I I never really had a, an intention of getting to VMware. That was never really a, like a goal. It just it kind of it, it, it things happened, and here it just I am. happened. Yeah, yeah, it, it was largely happenstance. Um, but yeah, it was like I said, about six months in my, my coworker or my colleague, he, he had just, he just gotten another, the other SE spot that was open and he reached out to me cause I didn't see it on LinkedIn or anything, but, um, he reached out and said, Hey, you should apply. And you know, it just kind of all happened. But yeah, it was, I, I was having a blast on the partner side. I really was. And, um, yeah, I, it just, here I am. <laughs> I really don't have a good answer for that. Yeah. But yeah, it was super quick. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm on the partner side now, just uh, more of the, the vendor side than, you know, partner like you were. Yep. Yep. But yeah, things are good. Um, all right. If no one has any questions, um, if, if you haven't seen in the, uh, in the chat, there's a link to uh, complete the Google form to sign in for today. There's an option to, to opt in for the vendor drawing. Uh, so if you want to be part of the drawing from Zerto for the uh, pair of Apple AirPods, uh, please complete that form and opt in, or there's an option there also to opt out if you don't want your information shared. Um, and I'll be sending that information over to Zerto for them to select the winner of the AirPods. Uh, so we're not going to have an, a winner to announce today, but um, thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, this meeting will be recorded, so if you missed any of it, or uh, have a colleague that was interested, uh, there will be a link in the uh, discussion section of the uh, NJV Mug uh, community group on vmug.com to uh, the video on YouTube.
All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, Want to talk about any issues or anything? No, just thank you to all our speakers. We appreciate your time. Oh, awesome. Yep. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, um, everyone else. Thank you to Zerto for sponsoring the event today. And um, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Everyone. Hey, everybody. Take care.